Are you saying you faked with me? Yeah. Wrong. Now you're single. What do you know about sexual relations? Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? I'm a little worried about being a slut. You're listening to the Come With Us podcast, talking the good, the kinky, and the ugly. Here are your hosts, Beth, Aaron, and Tina. Hello, 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 all you sexy holes and poles and oh, poles. Boy, you're going to play a very important part in our broadcast today. Welcome to Come With Us Podcast, where you're part of all the naughty, sexy, fun conversations. And today, it's a healing conversation, too. It's the conversation that everybody needs to hear, um, but not everybody gets a chance to. So we're glad you're here, and I hope that you'll encourage others who need to hear it. Because today, I'm Beth Darling, your sexy genius here from SexyEdSchool.com. You can learn all about me at SexyEdSchool.com. But today, Erin and Tina and I are welcoming a very special guest to the show. She has been a friend of mine for years, a woman that I admire um, more than almost any. I mean, she's just freaking incredible. She is definitely on one of my lists of hero women. She is a wife, a mother, a sister, a friend, survivor of childhood sexual abuse, um, an everyday woman, and now a certified trauma recovery coach. So she takes everything that she's learned in her life, and believe me, there's so much about healing from trauma and sexual trauma particularly, and she takes it and uses it to help benefit the world around her, the people, the women, the the men around, and um, through a very unique skill and gift. So um, you can find her at at april-k.com and April Kaminsky. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. It's really good to be here. Um, I um, it's it's funny. I'm going to ask you and give you all a, a chance to hear just a little bit about April's story, and then I want to tell you that my chance meeting with April really was just kind of a miracle too. Because even though we're in both living and working in Houston, Texas, it took me going to New York to be introduced to her. So from to somebody through somebody from California. So, all right. Welcome, welcome, Erin, Tina. Thanks um, for welcoming my friend, April. Yeah, we're so happy to have you. This is a, a very interesting take on a subject. It's certainly one I have never um, really heard about or read about, and you know, so I'm excited to talk to you. Yeah. yeah. And I think it came up because Tina at one point was like, oh, I could, you know, I want to learn, take a pole dancing class. And I was yeah. like, I know the bestest <laughs> teacher. No, yeah. I think everyone does. I think, yeah. you know, like a, it's kind of a something that specifically, and I'll tell you this just before we ask you, like we, my freshman year of college, we actually bought a pole, a pole, like a, yes. a real pole and put it in our freshman dorm. So a bunch of girls, it wasn't, it wasn't a great one. It kept falling and stuff, but like, <laughs> that yeah, was dangerous. It, it was, it was, it was like the life of like, everyone wanted to come in guys, girls, yep. everyone just wanted to like try it out and stuff. So yeah. You know. Pole dancing is not just for the strip yeah. clubs now. No, um, no they're, no. they're competitions, they're nationals oh, and boy. again, healing. So, okay. All right, April. Let's t- so tell us how did you find your way to story. the pole? <laughs> oh gosh, I, I love that story by the way. Pole dancing <laughs> is fun first and foremost, and I think every house in the world needs one. They're totally. just fun. And yeah. um, you know, they can be so many things to so many different people. Thanks for sharing that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found my way to the pole because I was looking for fun also. Um, way back in uh, 2006, I I found out about a workshop that was coming through here in Houston. And that was back in the early days of the internet. And um, so pole dancing wasn't um, as nearly in the forefront as it is now. It was very taboo, very underground, very like naughty and hush hush. So I made my way to this um, pole dancing workshop because I really wanted to learn how to learn to be sexier for my husband, my partner, my longtime husband. And who doesn't want to learn how to be sexier in the bedroom, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I make my way to this amazing workshop with like 200 women. Um, and the moment the workshop started, the lights went down super dark. The music was thick and heavy and juicy and yummy. There were red lights in all the corners. There were pillows and big fluffy mats everywhere. And I went, whoa, this is something definitely different than what 
I thought it was, what I planned for, and what I expected. And from that moment, that very first class, I was hooked. And it started off as a fun, flirty, frisky thing to be closer to my partner, my husband. Uh, and not only did it stay that, it became so much more. And gosh, that was 17 years ago. And I'm still incredibly passionate about it to this day. And it has brought some amazing people into my life. I love that. Um, now, would you have thought of yourself as like graceful or a dancer kind of, you know, before? <laughs> really? I can't, I can't find a stronger word than <laughs> hell no. Really? Uh, technically, that's two words. I had no dance background. I had no formal education. I didn't do ballet or tap. But I was a band kid in high school. And I mean, I had two left feet. Graceful was not a word that was in my physical vocabulary. <laughs> so no, oh, I really... Wow came into this environment and experience as green as could be. And to be honest with you, you know, even after all these years, I think that's one of the most beautiful aspects of it is that it can be and is so accessible to people that don't have that kind of background. Wow. Yeah, that's funny. I hadn't, I guess I had never asked that question because it sort of took me by surprise. <laughs> but um... No. Yeah, I I love hearing that because you're so graceful and amazing, Thank and you. I'm such a klutz, and I still have a desire. I've done like a couple of classes, and that's about it. So, and you know it's what I think fun. is is interesting about pole dancing. I'm sure you'll you'll talk about this, but from what I've talked to other people and certainly read a little bit, it's a skill of like strength, like physical strength. Mm -hmm. Unlike you know other other dancing, of course, like you're very skillful, you mm -hmm. know, ballerina. But it's much there's much more, you know, there's I think you have to be classically trained and there's technique like you're talking about. But here, I think it's yeah. it's also it's a lot to do with how really how strong is your body? How, you know, like how are you, you know, maneuvering up and down the pole? So I think that kind of goes along with maybe perhaps what we're going to talk about today, like the mental strength aspect of it, too. The stronger your physical body gets, probably, you know, like it helps you, you the, your mind get stronger, your mind heal, heal your mind. Absolutely. To heal, you know? Absolutely. It takes so many different kinds of strength, so many different kinds of agility. So mental, physical, emotional. And the, the great thing about it is that simply by engaging in the practice, whether you're self-taught, whether you're doing things without, you know, classes and lessons now virtually, whether you're going to a, an actual teacher or trainer or competitor to teach you how to do something, you actually develop each one of those as you go. The more you do it, uh, as I think with any skill, the more you do it, the more adept you become at it and you grow in ways that are not only linear in the ways that you want it to grow, but that expand sideways and that bring mm -hmm. in so many other elements of the thing that you're passionate about. Yeah, that's great. So how did you... Tell us about your state, your emotional state before you found pole dancing, right? I, I don't want, we don't want to spend the whole time on the trauma and stuff, but it does yeah. inform so much of who you are and, and what you do. It does. Um, so a short version is I was a wife, mother, working mom. Um, I assumed and thought that my emotional state was fine. I was going to going to work every day, coming home, making dinner for my family. Didn't think that anything was like lying under the surface. Now, of course, I do have a very long and deep um, ex experience of childhood um, sexual trauma. And I really thought that like once I had left home and left the situation, like shut the door on it, put a button on it, didn't address it. And I thought, I'm fine. I've moved on from my life. I've cut out the things and the people and the places. So I'm just toddling along thinking that I have this amazing life. And what happened was that this class that I took for fun and for excitement and for play wound up tapping into all of that repressed trauma that I had never touched on or dealt with. So through the movement practice, what we now know is that somatic through the body, we can access deeply stored trauma and emotions held in the body. And that was what happened for me. I, through this very topical, playful thing. I accessed some really deep stuff that I didn't realize needed to be addressed other than just like ignoring it. And through that process, I began to lean into understanding more about not only what was happening to me through my experience, but what I was also seeing happen 
to and for and with the other women that were taking classes right alongside of me. It was not an uncommon experience. So through that, I started to dig around and become really autodidactic and curious about, you know, what does this mean? How is this? Why is this happening to me? What can I do to support myself? How do I grow out of this and use all the things that I have access to to support myself and the people that I'm taking classes with? Wow. Yeah. I'm, I think statistics show maybe one in four women has gone through some sort of sexual trauma yeah. or something. I mean, the numbers are huge. The numbers mm -hmm. were not as clear about men. And yet, um, I know that a huge number of men have also gone through sexual trauma. So, um, you know, hats mm -hmm. off to, to everyone. But I do think that there's this idea with with trauma in general, but specifically with sexual trauma, that it makes everybody so uncomfortable that it's like, okay, mm. just, you know, cry a little bit when it happens, be angry if you want, and then put it in this box and just lock it away. And that's, that's, that means you're done. You processed it now move on. Right. It's like, let's just put a big bandage over it and call it a day. Um, and that doesn't, doesn't work. Do you uh, think that trauma had, was a, played a part in the fact that you weren't feeling like your sexiest before that, before pole dancing? Oh, gosh, yeah. So what I've learned since and what we now know through so much research and study and academia is that um, we can actually disassociate from trauma or from the body. We can disassociate the traumatic experience um, through the body. And moving forward, that really does affect every aspect of your life, whether you're realizing that it does or not. It affects the way that we attach to people. It affects our relationships, our romantic relationships, our friendships. It affects us interpersonally. So everything about you and other people connected is affected by early developmental childhood trauma. That's I can way. totally relate to this topic so much. I had some crazy shit happened to me when I was younger. Um, not, I mean, it wasn't sexual trauma, but it was trauma that I totally repressed completely. And it really has like come out in so many negative ways Ooh. over the years. Um, and really like learning to accept that and learning to, you know, talk about it is just so beneficial for me in many, in many aspects, you know? So, but I can understand. I remember like, when I was a teenager, I, the last thing I wanted to do was talk about, you know, what had happened to me. Yeah. Really. I terrorized therapists up and down Houston because it was just <laughs> like, I, I just don't think you understand people, you know, oh. like, so, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. so it, it's, it's totally yeah. true. And I know a lot, um, you know, about each of your stories and stuff. And I would say it's, it's so interesting, right? Because it, they're, they're so different. And yet, that's the thing about trauma is that everybody's experience is very unique. And yet for almost everybody that sort of, okay, let's just try to tough it, tough it out. Yeah. You know that, Oh, I hate that phrase, man up. Like I want man mm. up to be something good. I want that to be, you know, masculine, yeah. positive energy. I'm going to help you. I'm, you know, whatever, but manning up when it says lock it away, don't feel it, don't think about yeah. it and pretend it didn't happen to you just doesn't, doesn't work for anybody, not mm. the strongest man, the weakest woman or anybody, um, regardless of gender. So, so that's, that's it's totally yeah. true. Um, yeah. so you, you, ta you mentioned briefly, you have this amazing love story. How does this kind of play into the pole dancing and the healing and all that kind of stuff? Oh, gosh, my love story. The amazing love story that I have is that the most amazing human that I've ever met was um, strong enough and loving enough and patient enough and kind enough to stay by my side when the beautiful newness of a relationship underwent this really powerful transformation as the trauma became very real for me everything shifted. And the love story in a nutshell is that in a comfortable and supportive and loving relationship, we can heal our relational trauma. I've changed. He's changed. We've changed together. We've changed separately. And gosh, I mean, it's so easy to put like on a meme and it's so inspirational, but it's really hard work on both sides. It's hard work on both partners every day to commit to the process. 
Yeah, absolutely. The love story is we're still together. No, no, no. I was about to say he's, that is the, he's that's my the beauty of it. <laughs> he's my favorite person in the world. And that's genuine. Like yeah. he's genuinely my favorite yeah. person in the world. It's been, gosh, 29 years now. Um, yeah, I'm still crazy about him. He's my best friend. He's supported me through thick and thin. Um, of course, when the pole dance thing started, the man couldn't get his wallet out fast enough. Oh, yes, my wife's going to take pole dancing classes. She's going to be sexy. And, you know, shortly into that, it turned into, whoa, I thought this was for me, was his thought. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 this is for me. <laughs> so <laughs> it was this definite yeah. shift in the conversation. But. but but I love that really ultimately, right, I say this is the joy of relationships. What's good for one of you? is good for the other yeah. circles back is good for the both of you, right? That's the idea yeah. of relationship is that yep. you benefit, right? If, yeah. And um, I think that's phenomenal and it's beautiful. And, you know, a lot of our audience here, they're men who are dealing with mm. women who may or may not acknowledge the trauma that they've been through, yeah. right? A lot of people just don't yeah. even talk about it, mm -hmm. or to just don't know how to deal and their partners are, you know, like, hell, what do we do? Yeah. Um, and and I, and I think it. Sorry, not to not to interrupt you, but I do think it's really important to recognize to our audience that, that obviously therapy is super important when you experience mm -hmm. trauma, but that there are other outlets um, to help you heal. You know yes. that there are deserve them all, right? Yes. And that they should be taken into consideration. And mm -hmm. and it's great that you know they're becoming more and more acceptable. And you know it's 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 not just this one way to heal yes. this you know traditional. There are there are lots of other paths that that you can choose. Yeah. So you know I would encourage our audience to absolutely look into something like this if you you know mm -hmm. if you or your wife are experiencing you know, or going through, you know, healing and stuff like that. So I think that's super important. I literally couldn't uh, like clap for that enough, applaud that enough. Um, so healing is an ongoing process. Healing of any kind of trauma is an ongoing process. And there's more than one way to do it. Talk therapy, the traditional sitting on a couch with a psychologist, a psychiatrist, taking notes and giving you a prescription or giving you directives on how to make your life better is one part of it. So there are top down, thinking down processes like talk therapy. There are bottoms up therapies, the somatic pieces, which is literally what I do with pole dancing, feeding in the somatic movement of the body so that it's not always talking about the details, talking about the trauma itself, but accessing movement through the body to move through the stored trauma. The very definition of trauma is that it's not an event that happens to you. It's the lingering effects in the body based on the thing that happened to you. So it's actually stored in the tissue, stored in the fascia, stored in the muscles. So we can access a certain portion of healing, top down, thinking, down, thinking, talking, rationalizing, um, strategizing. And the other component that we now know is important to add into the constellation of modalities is moving the body. You've heard of yoga for trauma, Tai Chi for trauma, all of these body-based modalities that we can plug those in and make a healthier piece of the whole for people looking to support themselves. And I really like that. And I think actually I I probably would even go further. So I often will work with, with clients on um, the difference between head and heart, right? I say, you know, I've got a very, I'm, I'm a smart person. I can learn things, but the difference of knowing something in my head and yep. feeling it yeah. very, very distinct and different. And then, so it's not just then the heart, but then it's the body, which is, as you say, more and more research is showing that um, emotions actually start in the body. They mm -hmm. travel to our brain. It's our brain that then tries to understand them, identify, yep. um, you know, label them, categorize, yep. but, mm -hmm. um, more and more. And I think they're going to realize how much our body stores. And when people say, well, that's, that's crazy. You can't store that. I say, okay, here's the example, <laughs> chicken pox, right? Chicken pox, you get as a kid, you get over it or whatever, but that, that virus lives in your body. It waits until a certain point you're run down, you're tired, you're exposed to too much sun, you're stressed. And then it kicks in as shingles, which is horribly, terribly painful. And yet isn't a surprise. So people don't think just because we don't see it or whatever, that it's not yeah. true because it really 
and the research is coming out and doing so. Um, and then there's the spirit and everything as well, I mm -hmm. think. So mm -hmm. I appreciate you doing. Yeah, we have so much research now and ever mounting and ever growing volumes of research in neuroscience, in science and data evidence backed forms that show that trauma is processed through the body and trauma can also be released through the body. It's about nervous system health. It's about the health and the environment of our bodies as primal organisms beyond the brain, beyond the critical thinking brain, right? The prefrontal cortex, our abilities as very advanced animals to think, to reason, to assign meaning to, but it's the primal body where the impulses happen, where the trauma becomes stored. Okay. So um, just going back to like, you know, to the, the, I mean, this is like super interesting and, and, and like super, super important, but kind of relating it back, how did you get to start like teaching class? Like, how did you, when did you realize that they, like you could help other people through this? This was a calling. Yeah. <laughs> it was a calling. <laughs> just say that. Yeah. Um, I realized it was a calling right off the bat. I knew that there was something super special and different and unique about it. And I didn't have the language to articulate that at the time. I just knew that I was incredibly and unexplainably pulled into teaching this modality. And in retrospect, you know, looking back now, what I know happened was that as the healing started to happen to me, I started to realize that I could be a part of helping other women experience that didn't have that language at the time. I just thought I have to teach. I don't know why I have to teach. Um, so that started rather early. I became a teacher in 2009, I think. Do you have to have um, like a certificate to teach or? So you don't have to have a certificate, but the, the studio that I went through and that I'm still actively involved with, there was a almost year long teaching training program mm -hmm. that was not only like the credit, like the actual tangible um, nuts and bolts of how to be a teacher, how to teach a class, how to structure a class. Um, but then also tons and tons of what we called shadowing at the time and mock teaching. So there was a lot of hands-on experience as well as, as like the cognitive pieces mm -hmm. of what a class is, how to construct one, how to create one, and how to create that experience. And then behind that, on top of becoming a certified teacher in the modality, I also started to seek out additional trainings and certifications to to complement that, like pole specific, um, physical embodiment specific. I've worked with movement for trauma. I've worked with trauma-based mindfulness, trauma-based yoga, yoga for sexual survivors, um, sexual assault survivors. So the main piece is having a main body of knowledge to start with, how to work with bodies, how to work with students, and then taking it into gosh, taking it into the ways that work best for, I guess, the student or the students that you find yourself working with the most amount of time. I think right. the short answer is no. You don't have yeah. to be certified to teach anything. <sighs> and I think working with bodies and working with humans in particular, I think that we are best served when we are constantly seeking out more experience, more education, more training, mm -hmm on how to do that in a healthy way and in a way that supports the human, doesn't just teach the thing that you're teaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's that's important. There are lots of like mm -hmm. bachelorette parties and groups. They'll just go to a, a pole dance yep. class, right? Yep. And those, tons of fun and great. And But they'll often focus just on the bodily, okay, do mm -hmm. this, do that. Yep. They don't tap into what it is in the feelings. And, mm -hmm. and I say that's the difference Maybe that's what I like about you. You teach pole dancing like I, I teach sexy. It's not just about going through the motions. Technique yeah. without heart, without that 100% all in comfort, um, without emotions, to me falls flat. And, um, yeah. and I think that's what it is, is that pole is holistic for you, which, um, and that's the way you teach yes. it, which is, which is pretty miraculous. So thanks. Thanks. Yeah, and Aaron, you're so quiet there. Like, are, are you thinking, dang, you wish your wife would go to pole dancing class? I mean, always. <laughs> always. But, uh, yeah. Send her my way. Send her my way. Yeah. yeah uh, I mean, I guess, yeah. Like, what kind of, I mean, obviously, I 
don't know uh, any guy friends or any men who would, you know, have their wife or mm-hmm. significant other, you know, say, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Who wouldn't go, cool. Here's a credit card. Go. <laughs> yeah. um, just like your yes. husband did when you started, like, yep. but what would you say, like for, mm-hmm. especially our male listeners who are in relationships and want mm-hmm. to encourage that kind of, yes. you know, exercise or class or just yep. a way to get out and, you know, yeah. do that stuff. What do you do? Like, how would you, I guess not sell um, a, a woman on it, but like, say you have a woman who Encourage. goes, Oh no, that's, that's, yeah. that's not my thing. I, I either, I don't have the confidence or I don't think I'm strong enough or there's no way I'm in shape mm. enough for that. Like, how do you get them? How do you take a woman who's just nerve or just brave enough to show up and kind of yeah. meet with you to then mm. have them going, Oh wait, no, I can do this. And just like anything yeah. else, it just takes practice to get things going. Uh, That's such a good question, and I'm glad that you asked that question, Um, which is, that's a very common experience and conversation that I have with people is, I want to, it looks fun, but number one, I don't have the confidence, I'm not strong enough, I'll come when I'm strong enough, I'll come when X, Y, Z, and you know, you really just, you meet people where they are, and the bottom line is, you do it because it's fun. Come try it because it's fun, and through having fun, You'll build the confidence, you'll build the strength, you'll build the flexibility, you'll build all of these other X, Y, Z bucket list. The bottom line is it should be fun. And I love working with beginners. I love working with women that don't feel like that's them and they can because they all can. I've literally, I've literally taught hundreds, if not thousands of women over the years. And the biggest gift in the world to me is to see that moment of light up when a woman feels good in her body. And I think that's the whole, you know, the whole picture is, you know, take all the trauma stuff and the trauma training and the mindfulness based movement. You take all of that stuff and it's a really big piece of the the dinner plate underneath, but at the very top, it's accessible to everybody because it's fun. And my classes are really about teaching women how to have a healthier relationship with the body they live in right now. The other stuff gets deep and we can go wading in those waters. And then the entry point for everybody is let's have fun. Let's have fun and feel sexy and playful in the body that you have now. Well, I mean, we talked about it earlier, you know, it, it's not a, like anybody who thinks that, you know, Oh yeah, that's, that's got to be easy. You just like, you know, I can take <laughs> like even even guys who are out there go, oh, I can take a couple of classes. I can do. No, it, it's yeah. like insane full body strength, like core from your shoulder muscles all the way down to your feet. Every single muscle gets activated doing right. that kind of stuff. Yep. And mm-hmm. I think that's part of where the popularity came in is that yeah. there's, you know, how many millions of gyms out there that are charging people membership where they have they go, OK, cool. Well, we got treadmills there. We've got ellipticals there. We've got weights there. Um but then a lot of women would go, yeah, that's like, I don't find running fun. Like I do it just because no. whereas pole dancing gave them this, like, Hey, this is fun. And it's a really yes. fucking intense workout. So not only am I, yep. you know, staying in shape or getting in shape, I'm also having fun doing it because I'm not yep. going to have fun sitting on a treadmill for 45 <laughs> minutes every day and watching the same freaking show over and over again. Yep. That's a huge piece of it. Are you going to do anything that's not fun multiple times over? Even if you know it's good for you, most of us walk right by the thing that we're supposed to do, the thing that we have to do, but you're going to come back time and time again to something that's fun. And the side benefit is that it happens to be an incredible full body workout, an incredible access point to going deeper into personal work if you want it, an incredible starting point for figuring out a way to enhance the person that you are if you want to go down those roads. And if you don't, topical, fun, and it's really going to work your body and challenge your mind. Big believer in doing exercise that's fun because it's just (laughs) consistency because it's key. You know, you have to be consistent if you, and I can't do exercise. that's not good, like fun and consistent and me either. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, you know, you and I, we need to take some classes. Oh, for sure. (laughs) Okay. This is, this is going to inspire me. Yeah. 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 And, but so now April though, do you ever teach men? I know your, your focus is women, but do you ever teach men? Is there something for men to learn with the poll? 
So let me, a couple of questions there. Do I teach men? Yes, I can. Yes, I have. While I do mostly focus with women, and that's mostly my experience in education, um, I'm happy to teach men. I have taught men. It's a very different thing. But yes, it's totally possible, doable, and fun, might I add. Um, just want to throw it out there that my husband does happen to know a couple of badass pull tricks. That's but... awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> yes, yes, it's for men too. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Totally. I love this. All right. We're going to, we're going to get creative because somehow or another, um, I'm thinking we, maybe we need couples club, but we've got to do something. Yep. It's been the <laughs> pandemic. I haven't seen enough of you anyway, but this yeah. is particularly so helpful, so much fun. And I love without even realizing it again, you know, I talk about sexy fun and that's my point is that yeah. if it's not fun, as you say, nobody's going to keep doing it yeah. and we need to recognize, um, and celebrate the, the different, modalities. Such a good word. Sounds so I, fancy when I say it. <laughs> but Aaron, will you come take a class? Yes. Will you let April uh, teach us? I mean, I will. It's... <laughs> Yes. See, I enjoy the actual like gym, like the run, the the. Oh, I can make it challenging kind of for you too. Oh, I know. I I'm not doubting that it won't be challenging. challenging I don't like the challenge. <laughs> this is the difference: is that I like the I like the weightlifting at the gym. I like running out on the road. I don't like it because of the challenge. I hate the oh, challenge okay. part. I just, but I will do it. But what, like, would I have? Do I? foresee myself having some type of crazy awakening of like oh this is what i want to do all the time i don't think so i could be wrong um, and i could totally but, support you and just the one time come to have a, a fun party story to play with yeah, yeah. why not yeah. absolutely yeah plus i think that again if your if any if i mean partners are hesitant right and then somebody has to take the lead and and so as long as one person is like okay mm -hmm. let's go do i think that yeah. opens the door for others so mm -hmm. and again yeah. Pole dancing may not be the option, but as, as Tina said, there are so many different ways to go about things, to heal from trauma, to find your sexy, mm. even if you haven't gone through trauma, to reconnect, to add joy, pleasure, excitement, good health um, into your life. So if you start just trying new things, mm -hmm. this might not be it, Aaron, but maybe there's something else or maybe not, but at least it's, it's a good time or a good story. And that's, I mean, I think this is, I'm nothing if not willing to make fun yeah. of myself and laugh at myself. <laughs> like I, I don't, that is like, true. I'll make a fool out of myself for anything. Like I'm, I've always been that class clown. Like, Oh crap. I need to do a prep fall to make everybody laugh in the middle of the school. Cool. I did. I did it all the time. Cause I didn't care. Oh. So yeah, not, I'll look like an idiot. I don't care. It'll be fun. Don't yeah, It'll be I think fun. this is like a really fun thing for people to like just experience, even if it's just once. Yes. Like it's yeah. new, you know. It's not something, especially for men. Like I, I don't know. I think this is kind of cool, kind of an interesting, I you know, idea or couples and yeah. stuff. Especially because oh, I was just yeah. reading about men and um, male sexuality and stuff. And what's really interesting um, is that men, like on the dance floor and stuff, generally their arms and legs, but their their pelvis, their groin area they are taught so much to protect and that becomes actually it's also about protecting their emotional that they keep that so tight and they store mm -hmm. so much tension in their groin area and it shows up as performance anxiety and ed issues and all sorts of things so pole dancing also for them i think could help them get in touch and to relax their whole body and open their heart a little bit too. So I think there's tons and definitely, okay, we're going to, we're going to have to follow yeah. up on this and make some good things happen. Okay, yeah. Just for yeah, our see, listeners. Anybody who followed us on social media saw me beat both of y'all in ax throwing because, well, that's true. That's true. You know, that, that would be more of my forte. <laughs> this is going to be a thing where like, I, I'm not oh. letting, letting videos go up on social media because I don't want to see. <laughs> Yes, you are. I'm not yes, advertising that part. I'll advertise the stuff I'm good at, like axe throwing. I'm not advertising yeah. this stuff. No, 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 no. You're gonna be no. better at this than me because I right. don't think I have the 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 strength that you have. So right, but and I don't have any <laughs> grace whatsoever or any rhythm. So um, you anyway. don't need any of that to yeah. start. You no. literally right. don't need any of those elements to start. It's, so it's, that's it's what I know because I. Yeah, because I took one of your classes and I loved it. And I loved that there were women of all ages, mm -hmm. of all yeah. sizes, of all abilities. It was like yeah. they're thin. There's really super curvy. There's everything in the middle. Big boobs, no boobs, high heels, not you, whatever. So, yeah. so yeah. Awesome. and just in terms of like what what kind of classes do you teach just to our audience, just in case they want to like and, and, and what's the structure? Just, you know, um, a little a little self-promotion <laughs> for you. <laughs> Classes that I teach involve 
pole slow, technical pole, mat-based low, think yoga type warm-up. I can teach strength specific pole classes, flexibility specific pole classes, anything involving the pole, I can tailor it to what a customer or a client or a student is interested in. Um, typical format is 60 to 90 minutes. Um, every single class includes a warm-up, a cool down. I am a certified fitness instructor, so that is important for me to keep you healthy in your body from that space. Um, yeah. And really, I just love to meet with people and find out what it is that they're looking for and make sure that I can deliver the thing that they're looking for within the toolbox that I have access to. Okay. So and the, you ahead, also Ed. coach individuals, right? In terms Absolutely. of the trauma stuff? Yep. Okay. Yep. With or without a pole? With or without. Okay. Uh, so the trauma recovery stuff, the trauma recovery coaching is without a pole. Um, there can be a somatics based element to it, which means we might get a little bit embodied. I might get you on the floor. We might be tapping into the sensations of your body. But I have dance and movement specific classes and then coaching classes that have a somatic or embodied element, if that makes sense. But the pole is not typically a part of like the trauma recovery coaching unless we're using it one on one to use classes to emote and express the emotions in your body. Then that's a another different little lily pad altogether. Go ahead, okay. Tina. You had a question. Sorry. I had, I have just one more question and I know where we're trying to wrap up and stuff, but, um, how does what you do, like, does it relate at all to the, to the industry itself? Like the pulled, pull like stripping industry or entertainment industry or is there, do, do, do dancers from like, do I want to say stripper, but we had an entertainer on last uh, or stripper on last uh, entertainer on last week who uh -huh. says it's entertain, you know, so that's yeah. what I'm call calling it from now on. But like, or like you said, you had apprenticeships, like, or uh -huh. you, you know, what, how does it kind of like, or do you have anything Coexist. to do with it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is there respect, think, mutual respect, or is there a distancing? The, that's such a great question. And it's a really complicated question. So I'll try to like shore it up quickly. Um, they are definitely in cahoots with one another, feminine sensuality, sexuality, pole entertainers, strippers, dancers, every one of them has a preferred way that she likes, she or he or they like to be addressed. Um, none are right, none are wrong. We coexist. I do teach dancers, entertainers, strippers, webcam girls. Yes, I do work with them. The industry, the pole specific industry works with them. And um, it, it's such a conversation and it's a relationship that's so unique to the studio owner the teacher, the person coming to you for support in classes. I think the short answer is yes, we coexist. It can be a beautiful relationship. And that's, and yeah, that's what I'll yeah. say. Yeah, they absolutely coexist. Mm -hmm. I support, I yeah. support any and all workers who choose to use sex and sexuality, including the pole, in yeah. what they do. Absolutely, I do. Cool. Yeah. cool, cool Consent-based, cool. I will say. Yeah. I know um, that yes. always. Right. This mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. People keep wanting to think, confuse it with all sex trafficking. I'm like, no, no, no. You oh, can no, no. Support people in choosing to work in the sexy mm -hmm. field. Yes. And absolutely abhor, detest, and mm -hmm. be revolted by sex trafficking. That's not absolutely. consensual. Let's let's yep. get clear. So yes. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for that. Yes, you're yeah. absolutely right. Yes. Yeah, right. that's, a, that's a good question, Tina. Yeah. I, I like that because I think there is this sometimes this idea that, oh, I'm using this for this reason and that makes it better. That makes mm. it more something. And it should just oh. be like, yeah. we just need to stick together again. Whoever it is, the pole can be as wonderful and glorious as yeah. and as sexy can. And yet there can also be a part of it that isn't perhaps, but that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think um, individual respect okay consent and um, mutual respect is super important. Right, right. And I'm sure from the other side, the same thing, you know, like, you know, entertainers look at it kind of dissimilarly. And finally, you know, not yeah. just again, up, but like, I'm sure you like entertainers or there's a lot of sexual trauma that goes on in that mm -hmm. industry, right? So mm -hmm. and you talk about this didactic movement and all this kind of stuff. I could definitely see the relationship also between that, you know, obviously, it's a job for them or a career or something. But at the same time, it could be something that's also helping them heal um, themselves, you know? Absolutely. So when a woman or a man, when a human being is able to reclaim a part of themselves or a part of their story that was stolen from them, taken for them or written for them through a body-based modality like sensual feminine movement, pole dancing, 
stripping, choosing to work in the sex work industry, I think that a way that we individually choose to reclaim our autonomy and agency and choice is a beautiful thing. Yeah, amazing. Amen. Totally, totally. It's awesome. That's all great. right. Well, I think I've been, I've uh, talked enough or I had all my questions <laughs> answered. Let's just say that. <laughs> okay. The, I would, I would just have one last question before, yeah. before we go. And that is that what advice would you give to partners who have, who want to support someone who's, who's survived sexual trauma? Mm. Um, do you have any quick piece of advice or something for them? Because they're yeah, suffering too. I, they are. They absolutely are. I think a quick piece of advice uh, is to know that you are not alone. As a partner supporting someone coming out with that, you are not alone. There are support pieces in place for you also as a partner of a survivor. And the words, I hear you, you matter, I believe you, are powerful. Yeah. Thank Taking you, away the taboo and the shame yeah. about owning the conversation or owning yeah. the story is big. Okay. Thank you. That's beautiful. I, I appreciate that. So, all right, yeah. folks, again, you can find April at april-k.com and um, she's April Kaminsky and we're certainly happy to share her information for any and all of you who want to learn something more about her or get involved or work with her in any fashion. I think she's really, you're a special woman, April. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled that you're part of my world and grateful for all the, the benefit that I get from knowing you. So thank you again for being yeah. here. Thank you. Thank you're you. So, thank you're so you. welcome. It was so much my pleasure. Thanks for the great questions, guys. This mm -hmm. was really engaging and fun. Yeah. This was all awesome. right. Well, we're going to follow up. I swear mm -hmm. we're going to make something fun happen because I now I need to get on a poll. That sounds Come see me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Come see me. So many ways to do that. Definitely. So. All right. Good. Well, thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all everyone out there for listening. And please, um, we have to start talking. Sexual trauma is out there. Mm -hmm. It's in men. It's in women. You may or may not um, know it. You may not recognize it. It may, it's awkward. It's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's still there. So please don't, don't shy away from it, even when it's these hard conversations and know that reaching out to, to April and others doing that kind of work is always going to be a good thing. So, um, all right, folks. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron, anything else? Have I forgotten anything? Uh, no, uh, just the usual reminders. Uh, if you're not following us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or any of that, um, uh, Facebook and Instagram, it's at Come With Us Podcast. On Twitter, it's at Come With Us Pod. Uh, DMs are open for all those. Any of your thoughts, comments, concerns, questions. Uh, also, you can email us, Come With Us Confessions at gmail.com. It's Come With Us Confessions at gmail.com. If you have questions for April, uh, you know, go to her website, April K.com, or hit us up, Come With Us Confessions at gmail.com. We'll, we have contact info for her, believe it or not. So we'll get you in touch with her or we'll ask her for you. If you want to keep it anonymous, that works too uh any you know anything to the email too your questions comments concerns thoughts what yeah, if you, wanna, you want us to cover yeah if up. you want to do a pole dancing class with us then um holler at us because i swear we're gonna make oh this that's gonna be trouble somehow. yeah yeah anyways yes, yeah yes, awesome all right cool well thank you thank you thank you april um tina oh and um uh april wanted me to remind everybody that there is rain r-a-i-n-n um, and I think it's rain.com or rain.org. I don't know. R A I N N for sexual abuse, um, for sexual trauma, for support. Oh, rain.org. And it's rain with uh, two N's. Rain.org. So much information there. So many resources. Go check it out. They're an amazing, um, an amazing, amazing organization. So thanks so much to April Kaminsky, pole dancing extraordinary. And, um, Thanks, Aaron and Tina, for sharing this and celebrating my friend and the, the beauty that can come from embracing all things sexy with me. So I'm Beth Darling, your sexy genius from sexyedschool.com. And thanks again for being here for the bare naked truth about love, sex, and relationships. Big hugs and love, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Come With Us podcast. Be sure to follow us on social media at Come With Us podcast and send in your questions, comments, and confessions come with us confessions at gmail.com. Until next time, keep it fun, flirty, and naughty.